everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial. So today's has gone a little bit different to what I'd had planned. So the cards here, these beautiful uh, block step cards, were my final, or will, will still is going to be my final tutorial for my Valentine series. So it's already been recorded and I show you how to put this one together here. Okay, And then when I'd done them all I thought I was playing around and I thought I can make this as a double and I have made this gorgeous double step card or what I'm going to call building block card or building blocks because that's exactly what it is and what it reminds me of. So I'm going to show you how to make the double one today and then as a bonus tutorial and the official last of my Valentine series I will put up the video for this one tomorrow. So you're going to get an extra one on Saturday. So there will be six, I guess, projects, but it's kind of the, yeah, the two versions of this. So this one here, the inspiration came from Papercrafter45 on YouTube. I actually saw the picture on Pinterest um, first, and then I just typed it into YouTube and I saw her tutorial. So that's where I got the inspiration for it. But then this one I've designed myself and it was really, really fun to do and I've fallen in love with this card. I think this and the tower fold are becoming, yeah, the top of my, my favourites list. So yeah, so there's, that's all I'm gonna show you of those ones now. Like I said, you will get that tomorrow. They all fold completely flat and I've got envelopes and everything, but like I said, that will all be explained to you in tomorrow's tutorial. So if you do wanna do the smaller one, it will be there for you. But this is what we're gonna show today and isn't it gorgeous? It's just so lovely. On the back, you have room to write your message. It stands up just perfectly. It's solid. It's a really strong, nice card. And then the perfect part as well is the whole thing folds flat. And just look how lovely that looks for the recipient when they open their envelope to receive and see that. And here is the envelope made with the envelope punch board. You just flip it over and it will fall full. It will <laughs> go inside there perfectly like so. So it's got a little bit of obviously, you know, bulk to it just because of the, the fold in it, but that will still go in the UK, that would just be as a large letter. It comes out and then they will know that it will do that because it will still kind of want to ping back into that shape. I've used the free downloadable papers from the craft blog. I've used my little acetate butterflies here, which I adore. And the nice thing about these is they can travel flat and then they just spring right back up into their 3D form again. And then I've just decorated the top here with these flowers and little embellishments. And it's just, I love it, love, love, love. Right, let's crack straight on in to the tutorial. So I've got my envelope punch board here and my paper to do my envelope at the end. So I'll leave that to one side. And then I've got all the bits and pieces here. So we need them at the end. Now I have got templates. So I've got the template for the just the normal I get the block step card or step block card is what it's known as and that's the the smaller ones that I showed you that's the template for that one but this is my template for the double and I'm going to go through this all it's very very straightforward and this will be on my blog so if you want to have the picture up on the the blog post as you're crafting or if you want to take a photo of this now while I'm holding it or just pause your video yeah it's easy for you to follow okay so what you need to make the main card base just grab my scoring tool. Right, it's a piece of 12 by seven and a half, okay? So along the 12 inch side, you wanna score every one and a half inch. So really, really straightforward. So one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, and 10 and a half. Then rotate the card stock and now you'll be along the seven and a half inch side and you want to score again at every one and a half. So one and a half, three, four and a half, and six. Okay. Get rid of the scoreboard, no longer need that. And what I've gone ahead and done is I've just put all these crosses and stuff and basically I have copied this here. Now I can't fit it both into view so I'll just do half and half. So I've got you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. And I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. One, two, the third, fourth and fifth you want to put a cross on, which is what I've done. So my my third, fourth and fifth I've put a cross. And then 
where you've got those three, the middle one, the one right above it, you want to put across again, which is this one here. So you just want that shape here and crossed out. Then I move it, so we're now working on the bottom. Again, you've got your eight squares, and here's the eight squares here. Second one in, so one, two, three, four, and five, three, four, and five, put a cross on them. And then one above the middle one, put a cross again. So you want to have that there and that there. So if I now bring that up, you can see I've got three and one, and then a space, and then one, and then three which looks just like this. This is what you should have, three and one and a space and then one and three. And they should be on the side where you've got two and two and you'll have three and three. Okay, again, I'm just gonna hold that one there and hopefully this is all making sense. It is very straightforward. And I think once you start to see me cut into it. Now don't worry about these other cut marks for the minute. I'm gonna, don't wanna, you know, add more confusion. We'll just keep it very simple. So what we're gonna do first of all is I'll keep that in here actually because it's easy, it's a good way to revert to it each time. So now we're going to cut out these three and this one here. Now first, the easiest way to do that is we're actually going to cut down here, just to here, then cut all the way down to this one, cut all the way down to this one here, and cut all the way down to that one. So there's my three crosses. I'm going to cut, first of all, down there. This one I'm cutting down past that first score line down to the second. And again, down to the second, and then just down to that one, like so. So you should have these two loose and then two single ones loose either side, okay? Now lift that one up, just kind of burnish it away from you and now you can get in with your scissors and cut this whole um, one out here where we've put the cross okay just remove the whole piece and it's much easier doing it this way because you can get your scissors right in there and you don't end up kind of like buckling your cardstock trying to get your scissors in and again try and keep this as neat as possible because you will actually see all of this okay so now you can see if I put that on my template we've now removed this one and this one and that one folds down Okay, now we can take this whole piece out. So now I'm going to fold it down, put my scissors underneath, and I can get right in there now and again get, just get a really nice cut. Like so. so again, if I lie that on there now, you can see we've removed those three squares. So now you want to rotate it, and I'm going to rotate that now you've got the two down here and I've got the two here and then one two three just because of the way that we're cutting it so again you want to do exactly the same so cut up the first one so we're cutting up that one then those two those two and then that one so again that one and that one and then that one okay again lift that one up with the two and then you can go in with your scissors and remove those two squares. Like so. And then again, fold that one down and just get your scissors in there and remove that whole piece. Okay, so now I can lay that on my template and you can see we've removed that whole piece. Next, we need to do these cut lines, okay? So here's this shape here. We're gonna cut this one, just that line. We're just cutting there, and then the one above here is this one here we're cutting. So again, I put a pencil mark there and pencil mark there. And then on this side, we're cutting here, which is this one, and then just that one, which is that one. Just follow this shape, and you're just cutting next to it. So. You can see here I've just put a pencil mark where I need to cut because I can rub this out if it's still on show or not. So just very nice, neatly just cut there like so. And then this one. Like so. Rotate it around. And that's why it's easier removing that middle bit first because it makes it so much easier to get your scissors in. So now you should have these four free. And then, so that's that one that we've just done okay then just do the same here so you can see I've got a cut line cut line cut line cut line so there 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 and there all again just following that shape 
for again. You just get all your pencil marks on here first, the little crosses so you know where to cut and then where to cut these little lines. It should all be straightforward. And obviously the templates are handy. You can print it off as well and just keep it with your other templates. Like so. So now I'm just going to rub those out. Okay, so now I can just lie that down and again you can see there and you should have that one lift up, that one lift up, that one, <laughs> that one, both of those and both of those. Now I hope that's explained that well and um, now it's very very easy to put together. Now I've also realised I forgot to tell you you need a little hinge. Okay, so your hinge needs to be one by seven and a half and along the one inch side you're just going to score it half an inch all the way down. Now ideally you want this to be the same colour as your cardstock but my last piece that I had left was this size. I cut, I just cut it wrong so mine's going to have to be white but I'm going to just change the way I put it together so you don't see it because inside here there is the hinge at the back. Okay, so obviously this white is going to be seen, so I'm going to change it around a little bit. But yeah, you do really need to have your hinge the same colour as your cardstock. But if you're using a white base anyway, then it doesn't matter. Just burnish it, so fold it in half like so. And then just take a couple of little wedges off of each end. Just so, again, especially because mine's white, I don't want anything overhanging. You can see there, I've just taken... You can see the, the angle there, just a little bit off, put it that shape, you can see, tiny, tiny bit. Okay, so you have your hinge and you have this. The middle square here is where you want to fold. So you want to fold down and down on both sides. So you've got it like this. You'll have one side that's longer than the other. So one side will have four squares deep and one will have three and that's correct. Fold the one with the four up because that's now going to form your base like so, and you can see that we're going to put the hinge in here and attach it. Then all of these loose squares, you want to fold all of them in on it towards each other, so like so, and then the other ones, like so, okay? And already you can see it's holding itself, you can see the shape that it's started to take. So now, usually, when you've got your hinge, that will be the back of your card. Okay, so there's my base here, and that's going to be the back here. So all of these pieces that are on your side towards you, you want to fold down last. So all the back ones will go down, and these will go on top. That way, you get a nice view. You get that continued piece of cardstock. Otherwise, if you put that one over the top, you see the join. You see there? But I am going to, because I'm going to have my hinge at the front, I'm going to do mine that way because I don't want to see the white and then I'll have that continued bit at the back. So the hinge needs to go on either way. So we'll put the, actually no, it's easier to stick down first, which is why I show you in tomorrow's tutorial. So I'm going to stick to it that way actually and um, I'll just flip mine around, I'm not too bothered. Um, so hinges at the back so you want to stick all of these down like so so you're going to put glue on these here actually I'm going to do it on the opposite one you're going to put glue now on one two three and four and then you're going to stick these ones over the top of each one that one that one I'm going to do mine the other way just because of the way I've cut that hinge but um, again it all makes sense so put a thin amount of wet glue you don't need a lot Start from the outside and then just pop that over and it will perfectly marry up over the top because they're exactly the same size. So is that one. It's not the end of the world which one goes on top. It's just me being picky about seeing, you know, the joins and stuff. But if you really don't mind then it, it's still going to look great by the time you add your decoration anyway. It's that one. So there is the top all done. Okay, so now you need to add your hinge. So get your glue, pop it on one side. If you want to use half inch tape or any double sided tape on this part you can. 
and I like to put it on the bottom one first. So if you open up the actual base, flip your hinge over and stick that on, making sure the score line is running right along the bottom. I'm going to bring mine up a little bit just again because I'm using a white hinge. If I lift it up slightly then you won't see it poking out. But you want to make sure you keep yours as flush to the bottom as possible. Okay, make sure it's all nice and burnished. And then, so hopefully now you can just see how it all comes together. And next you want to start from one end, bring that down. I'm going to make sure it completely covers that white, like so. And then just come along to the end here. Like so. So my hinged front now, my, the hinged part now becomes my front, but it will be on the back for you. But as you can see, even doing it my way, it doesn't matter. So now you can't see that at all. So I've got a white hinge underneath there and you wouldn't know it's there. But it just means now when they look at it, even from the side, you can't see that hinge. And this is all going to be decorated. You won't really see that anyway. But you should have a coloured one anyway. It's only because I've got white. But that's it. That is how easy it is to put that together. So now it's the fun of decorating. So you're going to need 17 of both of these sizes that I give you. So as you can see also this isn't a Valentine's one I'm doing because I've got quite a few Valentine's cards now. I don't need any more. So this is a birthday one and it's using the Fiesta Free uh, Papers by First Edition. This is the silver mirrored cardstock by Dovecraft that I've used a lot which I love. For the larger square it's one and a quarter squared and for the small one here it's one inch squared for the pattern paper and I just went along and just used the one inch punch there so that was really quick to cut those all out. Stuck them, all these coming down in front of me, there we go, stuck them all on top of each other and you should have 17 of each of them and then just with a thin amount of glue just in the middle you don't even need to cover the whole square on your front you just want to fill all the panels or you may want to decorate it differently but I'm just going to go ahead now I'll speed this bit up but you can still see how I do it I'm just going to cover all of this okay so that's all stuck down this back piece here I forgot to say you need is four and a quarter by two and three quarters and there you can see I've got the mirror cardstock, it looks so nice. And that, once you add all that on, it really starts to, you know, make it look like building blocks. And I think it looks fantastic. So now the fun part of decorating here. So again, I will speed this up just so you can see, but I'm going to have flowers on the tops of each of these, like so. Then these other three flowers are going on the front around the Let's Celebrate, which will also be on the front. And then all these leaves are going to be nestled underneath the flowers and then all finished with a little embellishment on top. Of course, you can carry it on on the back as well, but I'm going to crack on and get them stuck down. And there you go guys, how pretty is that? I absolutely love it. <laughs> Every time I added something I was like, oh it looks so pretty. I've added my little butterflies to this one, same as on that one there. You see just in the different places and just, I mean, just how different they look. You know, we've got a nice little Valentine's one there, we've got a birthday one. Obviously it looked great as a baby's, you know, with the, like I said, the little building blocks and all like, you know, baby pink and baby blue and yellows and stuff would look really nice. I love that there's loads of room to write your message and you can obviously embellish even more there as well if you want. Also when you do this, when you lie it down flat, you can afford to have more bits overhanging because you've actually got all this free in your envelope, if you imagine that area there. So you can do more, you just don't want to go over the top and you don't want to go over the sides, okay. But again, just look how lovely. It does, it just stands up. So now we can do the envelopes, that takes no time at all. So I've got here my paper, 
and this was the closest I could get to match. This is 10 and 3 quarters squared and I'm following the 6 by 7 and a half which is what this is when it lies down flat the card. So it's telling you you need a piece that's 10 and 3 quarters by 10 and 3 quarters which I've got. First score line is at 4 and 7 eighths of an inch so as I say in tomorrow's tutorial, I'm not doing a, a lesson on this now because I do already have a tutorial showing you how to use it, which I will link in now for you. Um, this is just a quick one for you to just see how easy it is to use and put together. all of the score lines and then I've got some tape just run it about half an inch up from the, the side there lies down flat you can see fit in the envelope perfectly so that is it so this is this is the last one I filmed now but tomorrow's is the I guess now the official last tutorial that one was going to be it but then I thought actually this I think really packs a punch and has the well factor and I adore it so those are my two double block step card or building block card so building blocks card I don't know you'll see it in the title anyway but I will play around with it but yeah so there you go guys so I hope you've enjoyed them I've loved making them um, if you have as always please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more see you later bye